Okay, so we're just going to start off with our curve, bring that into the attribute editor, and we're just going to add our trim path, and then we're going to add our sub mesh. If you're starting out in cavalry, get to know the sub mesh, you can do some pretty cool things with it. Uh, the order here does matter, so we're going to have to have our trim paths first, and then our sub mesh second. If you get it wrong, you can, whoops, you can move them around in there. Cool. So we're just going to jump into our sub mesh, click on stroke, and click on replace stroke, and then we've got our color array. And as soon as we do that, you can see that the line is broken up. I'll just make that a bit thicker. It's broken it up so you can see the different colors. To add more, jump into your trim path. So you can just add and take them from there. Um, so to add motion to this, you're going to use the travel in the traf, uh, the trap in the trim path tool. If you do it in the sub mesh, you're not going to have a good time. So I'm just going to click in there, and we have motion. Pretty cool. So for now, I'm just going to slow that down, and let's jump back into the sub mesh. So as you can see here, we have the width. What we can do here is we can add a modulate. And the modulate by default is not what we want. We're going to go down to custom pattern. And um, here we can just do 10, 20, 60, 30, 5, 25. And you can see it's added just a bit more of a, an interesting look to the patterns here. Maybe there's a bit of an issue where it, they get too big. We'll see what happens there. Yeah, it's a bit better. And um, yeah, that's that. The other way you could do this is instead of using the modulate tool, we'll just delete that from there, you could also add an array. And we could just add this in here. Like from last time. And then it's just going to cycle through that array. So it's just that's just two different ways of of doing that. The added advantage of using the value array is that you can you could tweak the numbers here in different ways. Um, yeah, you could just animate it and just put in other um, behaviors and whatnot. Yeah. So going back to our stroke, we've got a few different options as well with the flat and the rounded edge, which kind of gives it a bit of an Ouroboros kind of look if you're familiar with After Effects. And speaking of that, the, in the Ouroboros, you can have the paths going at different speeds. So if you want to give that a go, jump into your frame option leading into your trim paths and just add a random into the value. And with this value, it's going to go wild with 10, which is pretty crazy. So just put out something um, not too, you just tone it down a bit. So 0.5 and 2 is what I found were okay. And you can just see the, the lines should just kind of go in at different paces as they go around that shape. So yeah, it's quite a nice, simple effect. And if you've got, if you've got some frames that are relatively static, adding some motion curves like this can really kind of just add a bit more life to it line let's go back into the stroke and you've got this dashed pattern here um, which is pretty straightforward so you just type in whatever your number whatever your numbers are so the first number is going to be the length of the line the second number will be the gap between it so you, this is 50 15 gap 50 15 gap and you can just carry on adding whatever digits you want in there as well and one of the examples I had on the opening uh, slide there was some motion going along and that's just with the dash offset which is pretty pretty straightforward. And then I just threw that line into a duplicator, and then I threw and I created another duplicator and I rotated it so for the horizontal lines. And then I created this shape here, which is just the cross that you can see on all of them. And I put that into a duplicator, and I've used the intersections option for distribution. And in there, I just simply put those two duplicators in, and it puts a little cross here at all of the um, all of the intersections. 
So the other way of creating motion on the path is just using the duplicator. And we'll just basically just come into the here and click on path. And then bum, 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 drag our path onto here. And you've got a few different options here per contour, per shape, per sub mesh. So if we can just play with these, you can just see how it, how it sits. I'll just turn this off. And again, we've just got our travel function here. So what we can do is just click on that and add frame. Just bring it down a little bit, just so it's a bit slower. So yeah, it's kind of cool. That's pretty straightforward. So to add a bit of variation through here as well, we should just be able to click on here and add the noise and pump that up a bit. It's going to be crazy. So when it does crazy things like this, what you can do is jump into your noise and go to advanced. Oh, that was right clicking on the header, advanced, use position. Now we take that off and we, um, yeah, what if I just take this off? So you can just see the motion there. So maybe if it was, this frame was a bit slower, it might be a bit more obvious. Yeah. So you could create some quite cool particle flow effects with something like this as well. Um, hopefully a couple of those techniques give you a few ideas and a bit of a starting point as to what you can do with paths and strokes. Um, so yeah, as with everything in Cavalry, have a bit of play, have a bit of an experiment, and uh, if you want to keep on seeing more tutorials, like, subscribe, comment below, um, and I'll up my game a bit and see how we go. Thanks for watching. Some people had asked also how to do a gradient on a path, and while it's not directly possible, you can kind of do a bit of a hacky way, and I'll show you my hacky way of doing it. Um, ba -ba -bum, add a blur crank the blur and he's going to use the outline tool and with the outline tool we have to grab a path okay so we're going to use the outline tool so I'm just going to duplicate that delete everything but the um, subdivide at the bottom and then what have we got in here nothing so We're going to say this is your input shape and then we're going to make it, oop, make this a mask of the original one. And then we're just going to turn off, oops, turn off that. Um, you get the general idea of how this works. Um, I've had better results um, to, you're playing, with the, playing with it in different ways, but yeah. Yeah, anyway, it's just good to know that that's an option if you, you wanted to um, add something like that to some of your work.